Today I'm at Flamingo Land Resort in Yorkshire to finally face my fears and ride the one remaining thrill coaster in the UK that I've avoided up until now, the infamous Hero. Will I survive this torture device unscathed? I'll also be accidentally causing an emergency stop on Kumali, taking you on ride all the major attractions at the park and having a catch up with theme park insanity about the Lost River ride construction. So let's drop into Flamingo Land. Well, good morning from Flamingo Land Resort, and I'm here today with a bit of a mission. It's a mission I'm not very happy about, but there's still one thrill coaster that I've not hit in the UK before. It's the one I probably dread more than any other, the infamous hero. Today's the day, and here is the evil bugger. I'm not gonna ride it first because I think I need to build up to this one. It's quite busy, there's a lot of school trips here today. I just wanted to point out the state of vortex here though, because it looks like someone's loaded up a photo on their phone and just sucked all the saturation out of it. The pirate ship by the entrance here has always been super cool though. They do do shows on here throughout the day, but this has almost felt like a really excessive piece of theming for a park that doesn't have a great deal of theming. So I've been joined by Joe from Theme Park Insanity and George from Loops and Donuts and we've just ridden sick. And that is still a really solid coaster, still the best roller coaster here. It is of course the Intamin 10 inversion coaster with lap bars which do make all the difference. It does have a little bit of a rattle in places. I think that might be because it's been transported about 14 times uh, in its life cycle. But overall it's, it's a really fun roller coaster. It is obviously all about the inversions. The Airtime Hill coming into the Cobra Rolls good. The misters were very, very, very appreciated because it is really muggy here today. So overall, not a bad start. It is very busy here today and most things are on one train operation. So it might be a bit of a sluggish one for getting on rides, but we're gonna do our best. So we have made our way to Hero. I uh, feel slightly trepidatious, not gonna lie. I think I'm probably gonna ruin my back, shoulders, knees, brain. But it's gotta be done, hasn't it? It is the one remaining thrill coaster here in the UK that I've not ridden. Let's do it. I mean, that is a lift hill of nightmares, isn't it? I mean, it looks like it's made by AI. I mean, what even is that? It does look like something from one of the Saw films. Can't make it too straightforward for riders, can you? And it looks like they're trying to do some sort of stunt. Well, the time has arrived. I'm about to ride Hero. It's a new credit. I don't get many of those in the UK. But um, yeah, wish me luck. It's awful, isn't it? It's terrible. So as far as heroes go, that is more Homelander than anything else. Just a sickening disgrace of a roller coaster. I'm not sure why anyone thought those volets would be a good idea. They are just torture devices. Shoulders and knees just took an absolute battering. And it's not even like it's thrilling. It's just like a flying wild mouse. Yeah, put it down, put it down and replace it with something better. <laughs> anything, anything. <laughs> so my previous two visits, Navigator was not operating. So it's good to see it back in full service again because obviously we don't have anywhere near enough Zamperla discos in operation in this country. We need as many as possible. I think Zamperla are moving to actually just have them installed in people's back gardens, on random council estates. <laughs> TV 
So we are heading into the queue for Mumbo Jumbo. It's SNS El Loco. That's Mumbo Jumbo ticked off for the day. I do think it's quite an enjoyable layout. The tight turns and the beyond vertical drop and the weird hang timey stall thing and the, of course, the death roll from Wish are all pretty good fun. But the shoulder bits to sit over the top, the sort of shoulder collars, they really do just dig in. They re really were stapling riders in as well. So not the most comfortable experience, but still, a decent coaster and now we're round by Kamali the Vekoma SLC probably one of the better SLCs you're likely to ride partly because it's quite short and it's got a great drop so yeah let's go board Kamali oh the, the toy yeah yeah is that why you stopped it? Seriously? I can't. So top tip for ride ops, check things like glasses on people's faces before you dispatch the train. I was stopped the train on a lift hill for five minutes for that reason. Sorry people behind me. So good to get back on Kumali and ride it on the front row. That was however quite a strange experience because they stopped the train halfway up the lift hill to check my glasses. Now, why wouldn't you do that before dispatch? Now, I always have them tied because if I lose my glasses, I can't get home. Weird move there, never really known that to ever happen before. <laughs> it's so cool how to have this little water park section, especially on a humid day like this, you can run through the water and cool down a little bit. So as you can see as we're walking through the zoo here, the Lost River Ride trough is completely empty. That's because it's going through a bit of uh, refit work and I'm gonna have a chat very shortly to someone who knows a lot more about it than I do. When you visit a theme park with fellow creators, when West Ham play away at Liverpool. So I'm here with Joe from Theme Park Insanity. Joe, you've been following the construction of this from pretty much the beginning. I have, yeah. So what are they doing with this Lost River ride? Because they've shortened it a little bit, which seems odd to me. So what's your understanding of the situation? So everything obviously I've heard has come from sort of sources within the site itself and also within the park too. Now, again, you know, none of this has been officially confirmed, but from what we do understand, the ride itself is undergoing a major transformation and the drop in terms of the height of it has been lowered by half. Now, what we believe is that this was due down to the fact that the boats were struggling to make up the initial drop. Of course, it was an old ride um, and the systems that were in place weren't kind of cutting it as it were, getting it up there anymore. Now, what's gonna be happening to it is effectively they're gonna be putting in the same boats they had before because we've seen those in the back lot behind where Kumali is um, but you're gonna have a whole brand new ride experience it's gonna be a lot of additional theming a lot of additional elements added to the ride um, and overall it's gonna look very very different indeed from what it used to be now in terms of other things that have been added to the ride as well we also understand that I think there's gonna be a new sea line enclosure that's going in okay. so that's obviously where the original drop was 
And then obviously where the uh, drop will now be is where the path used to be, where you used to stand and get absolutely soaked. So quite a change to be fair actually, and it's, it's moving very fast at the moment as well. Yeah, it does look like they've made quite a lot of progress from, from kind of just from what I've seen. So is this like probably anticipated for next season we'll be looking at? Yeah, so I think it's fair to assume at this stage that we are looking at a 2025 opening. I've heard that again from quite a lot of people as well. Um, and that will make perfect sense. I think potentially maybe spring of 2025. Obviously, we need better weather for water rides here in the UK. Unfortunately, yeah. we don't get much hot weather, weather, although I am literally dripping as we speak. It's very humid today. It very, very much is. But yeah, definitely 2025. I think we'll find out more about it, obviously, early next year, kind of given Flamingo Land's track record in terms of marketing. Um, and yeah, I'm just looking forward to finding out what we can expect, really. Okay, and you're down here quite frequently with updates. So am, where, yeah. where can people follow the updates? Uh, so you can follow us over on YouTube, that's at TPI Official. Um, you can also follow us over on Facebook. There is regular weekly news updates uh, at TPI Official again as well. We're also on Instagram and TikTok too. And if you do want to follow our kind of blog posts and our news posts, then we also have the website, which is themeparkinsanity.co.uk. Cheers, Jay. No worries at all. Subscribe for more top class content like this. <laughs> so we're now heading into Mischief Mansion, which is a dark ride here that I've never experienced before. And to be honest, I didn't know it existed until uh, a few weeks ago. So let's go and experience something a bit different. <laughs> Well, Metro Mansion was a very retro dark ride there. Lots of sort of UV bits, some kind of cool animatronics. Obviously, they're going for a kind of a young Frankenstein-y kind of vibe. It's very cartoony in places, but, uh, and a bit dated, I've got to say. But you know what? Having a dark ride is better than not having a dark ride. So, there's that. So entered the queue for sick for one more ride. Uh, of course, this red track here is Velocity. That's been down for some time, so that hasn't been operational today either. Trancing it up in the station for the second row from back. I let theme parky sanity and loops and donuts at the back themselves. Hands up, crew! Woo! So I finished the day, there were two rides on sick, including the very last train of the day, which is always, you always feel like you've got full value out of a theme park if you're riding last train of the day, don't you? And that's a good coaster to coast to. Certainly the best here, so much better than Colossus. Like lap bars make so much difference. Um, so let's get outside, we'll have a chat about Flamingo Land in general. So they are actually testing velocity. Good to see, obviously no good for today's visit, but hopefully it should be open soon. So that is all from a very humid and quite busy day here at Flamingo Land Resort in Yorkshire. And overall it's been pretty good. I think this is one of them parks where there are so many opportunities, but despite that, what they've got is actually not too bad. A lot of rides here only operate on one train, which is a shame. It was, it was quite a busy day. Lots of school trips here, over 40 coaches in the car park. So that did mean quite long queues at times, but, uh, but overall I think it's, it's been fine. They do need a few more things here, I think, to really take it up a next level but uh it's not a bad park to visit however i think the one thing that does hold it back is the price so on the gate ticket to get in is 56 pounds um these guys pay twice that much because they love it so much we've got, i've got an annual pass so to be fair it's worth having especially if you're going to be coming more than four times in a year just want to bear in mind i've yeah. got a free return you got a free return yeah 
you didn't, free, you didn't get free donuts, though, did you? No, not free donuts. No, not just free. no free donuts. No See, that's donuts. that's why you should not come to Flamingo Land. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to leave it there for the day. Um, my video from Emerald Park is up on the screen there. They got two awesome new Bacoma roller coasters, well worth checking out. Uh, I'm off to the Hoppings and Fantasy Island this week, so there'll be vlogs from those too. So subscribe if you'd like to see those, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.